Hey, what's up, everyone? I am Sportu, and I'm here yet again with yet another ant care species guy. Now, today we're going to be talking about a Messer species. In this case, Messer aciculatus, because I have actually it's my first ant care species guide is on Messer barbaros, and that ant care species guide can basically be interchangeable for any Messer species in the Southern, Europe, Southern European region. So like Messer uh, Wasmani or something like that. It would basically be almost, if not completely, the same care guide. It's, uh, it would be a copy pasta if I made uh, an, an, another for that specific species if it were Southern European. Now, Messer Cyclatus is the, um, the, the poster face for um, Asian messers, messers, so any messa or any, well, let's say any ant species of the genus messa that is from Asia will probably be basically the same thing as Messer siculatus. And if you're looking to buy an Asian messa, Messer siculatus is probably the one you'll find a quicker. Uh, and in better conditions and, and in, in better prices so it's the it's the one I'm doing the actual end care species guide on so this end care species guide focuses on Messer aciculatus and most of it is applicable to most Messer species in the Asian continent okay so now that that's out of the way let's get started by talking about well environment they hail from Asia and they are very prominent in such countries as China, Korea, Japan and Russia. Now as you can see these countries aren't exactly um, in the, on the south of Asia. I mean some of them are but in those this Messer species exists mostly in the north. So they exist in the south of Russia, north of mostly all the other all the other countries I mentioned. Okay, so they are technically temperate, a temperate species of ant, even though they come from Asia. That does happen, and this is one of the examples. There is there are very few Messer species which are technically tropical and do not need hibernation. Well, do not do hibernation in the wild. These guys are a very specific case, and I'll get to that in a second. First of all, let's talk about, you know, uh, the environment when it comes to the little numbers that you need to know in order to keep this species. So, in when it comes to humidity, they'll need anywhere from 30 to 70 percent. They can deal with very dry environments, but they should be kept over 50 if they are to thrive. They, sh they should also not be moistened up too much they do not like that a lot so the the nest should not be very hydrated they should have a big portion of dry um drier area uh, or at least an area that is at basically the same humidity levels as the outworld so they can store seeds and even their brood they don't really need a lot of humidity to develop well so they are a very much dry loving species and almost all master species tend to be they tend to live in open grassland and they tend to have very deep nests where they keep the seeds up at the top where it's a little bit drier and the the brood down below where it's a little bit more humid they do have a lot of ventilation holes so they don't really do that very damp soil humid nest thing they really do prefer drier conditions okay Anyways, you give them a gradient of both this and temperature. And temperature, they can actually stand a very, very uh, wide range. They can go anywhere from uh, 18 to 32 degrees Celsius, and that's a very big range. They'll be okay in that range. But for them to really be thriving, the threshold should be anywhere from 23 to 27 um, degrees Celsius. It's basically the same as the golden 24 to 28 threshold they just like it a little bit uh colder so that being said 
uh, you should give them a gradient, as I've mentioned, and you should also keep in mind that they need a place to store seeds, which should be completely different in humidity to the, the place where they store the brood, okay? So, the, the best thing to have is two separate nests in the home setup. Having two separate nests will allow you to very easily maintain a dry, safe space for the seeds and a, a more humid and safe, uh, safe space for the brood and the queen. And as I've mentioned, seeds, seeds and seeds and seeds. Uh, and yeah, yeah, they eat seeds and they primarily eat seeds. Just like Mesa Barbaros, you can have a colony thriving just off of seeds. They will almost never consume other types of carbohydrates. They will almost never eat honey or sugar water. They'll just prefer the seeds, which they turn into a sort of ant bread to eat. They also eat insects because they need some protein and there's not a lot of that in the seeds. However, they do not need a lot of them to, you know, the colony size. And you can, if you want, never at all feed them insects. I wouldn't do that because insects are a great source of protein for ants and it does help them to have protein in their diet. But if you're only having to feed protein once a week or once every two weeks, you can feed them other types of protein like hard-boiled eggs or something along those lines which aren't really practical to do every day for your ants but if you're only doing it very sporadically that's maybe something that interests you in case you don't really want to have to feed insects to your pets okay so Messer Aciculatus in that regard is the normal uh, Messer sort of uh, nutrition and the only difference to now that I've that I've talked about now to the southern European ones is basically that that they have a little bit of a different temperature and uh, environment preferences and that they they come from a different place they're also shiny black and now let's come to differences which are in sizes first of all the size of the colony is basically the same. They also grow into the 10,000 and in captivity more like 5,000 and a little bit over that. Uh, but yes, they do grow to like a colony of 10,000. It's not as impressive as let's say a fully grown Mesa Barbaros colony because each worker is only five millimeters long and there's, there's nothing more to it. Sadly, they're not polymorphic. In my opinion, it's very it's very interesting the polymorphism in, for example, Mesa Barbaros, which is very very polymorphic. Uh, they are, however, polygynous. So the numbers of colony size can be can fluctuate a lot depending on the amount of queens that you have, and also the growth that your colony will have will depend on the amount of queens that you have. Personally, I always prefer a species that is capable of achieving the same numbers with the less queens. So for example, a Mesa Cicuatus colony will have more trouble getting into the 10,000 mark over the course of X years than a Mesa Barbaros colony will if they have only one queen because Mesa Barbaros is by nature monogynous and therefore they can do it easily with one queen. Mesa Cicuatus is evolutionarily accustomed to having more than one queen. So maybe if you want a colony that grows very fast and grows to very large numbers, you'll have to get your hands on multiple queens, which, by the way, you can't put together. They have to get together themselves because if you put them together with workers, that won't work. If you put them together before they have workers, they might fight or they might have workers and then those workers might fight the other workers and the other queen. So you never really know unless you sort of found them together or you have made them f found the colony together. So if, if, you, if they've just been captured from nuptial fight and if you put together and they're from the same region, that will probably be fine. So it's actually very easy to find colonies with two or three uh, queens of Messer Siculatus and that's very interesting. Having a monogenous species can also be interesting. In my opinion, for me, I prefer to have the same growth capability in a monogenous species. 
and I also very much prefer the polymorphism of uh, Mesa Barbaros. The other thing that the polymorphism brings is that the base worker of, of Mesa Barbaros and Mesa Arciquatus is basically the same size. Um, I'll even go as far as saying that the base Messer Asiclatus worker is normally a little bit bigger than the base or smaller Messer Barbarus worker. But the bigger uh, Messer Barbarus worker is the size of the, the Messer Asiclatus queen. And because of that, they can chew and turn into ant bread tougher and more nutritious seeds, which Messer Asiclatus can can't. So. What that does is it makes it so that Messer Barbarus can live better off of seeds than Messer Arciculatus can. Now this is not the difference between Asian species and European species. That comes in environment because the care is pretty much the same except with these little notes, okay? So I think that everything that I've talked about is everything that you need to be a successful keeper of Messer Aciclata. So, if you want and can do it, go out there and get yourself a colony because with all the information I gave you, you're probably the greatest keeper they could ever ask for. And that being said, have fun and keeping and I'll see you later in the next video. Bye-bye.